parts about this evening, and um, we want you, if you will, if you go to First Corinthians three and six, and we're going to look at uh, Saint John ten ten. All right, very familiar passages. Saint John ten ten and. Uh, Corinthians. You have Second Corinthians. Say amen. amen. Just put your hand right in there. Second Corinthians three. And with your hand in both of those passages, bow your head just for a moment. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask that you would speak to our hearts tonight, and Father, minister to us hope. You're the only one that can bring hope in this dying age. And we recognize it's through the power of the gospel. And we know it's by your spirit that inundates us and causes us to become alive in you. We pray here today, Oshimaita, that the manifestation of your power be made known, be felt, be understood, be crystallized, be clarified. Lord God, let no one walk away hidden, no one with a precarious thought or in a quandary or misunderstanding, but let there be clarity of speech. Lord, let your word go down and let it go down in good ground, good ground, so that it bring forth fruit in its season. Father, you would that all would be saved. Father, call unto our hearts and we'll answer, yes, Lord. Show us where we are, and oh God, we will improve. Let us be the bettered for coming here. Let us not have come in vain, but master, let us go down different and increased and revived and reconciled into your glorious power. We pray, God, that when you return, that we'll go back with you and hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant enter in the joys of the Lord to this we say yes Lord can we say yes Lord come on say it again yes Lord in John we're just going to have you read just for a moment and um, we're just going to ask you to look at John St. John 10 and uh, we're going to look at those famous passages there uh, let's look at 10 and Look at 9 and 10, all right? You knew where we were going, right? All right, come on. Let's read it together, shall we? John 10, 9 and 10, and it reads what? I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Read it once again. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 10, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that ye might have life and that they might have it more abundant. Lee, the first clause, the eighth clause of 11 says what? I am the good shepherd. Look at somebody say, he's the good shepherd. He's the good shepherd. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 3, and those first few verses there, and, and we'll bring you up as the Lord should lead because really we, we're the text, uh, our textual setting is really in chapters 2, 3, 4, and 5, but we're just going to read 3, all right? Shall we? Let's begin with verse number one and we'll conclude at verse number six, all right? Come on, let's read it together. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men, where for, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ ministered by us, 
written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God who also hath made us abled ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Verse 6, in conclusion, once again for your hearing, shall we read it together? Who also hath made us abled ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Look at somebody and repeat after me. Look at him just square in the face and say, He hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Come on, let's just shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, just for uh, a thought so that we can do recall when we have need of, we're just going to ask you to just tell somebody, I'm able. I am able. I'm able. Tell them again, I'm able. Say it again, I'm able. Did you look at them? Why y'all ignoring them like that? Look at I promise you they won't bite you. Not here. Look at them in the face and say, I am able. I am able. I am able. The Bible says it like this. He has made us able. And he doesn't just say able. He said abled ministers. Abled ministers, abled ministers. Now, our sufficiency says not of ourselves, so that we can boast or think anything great or be in self in grand eyes to think that we are something, but our sufficiency, our abledness comes from God. He hath made us abled ministers abled ministers of, he qualifies of what? Just not abled ministers just to take all the money and run and eat up all the chicken. <laughs> but he qualifies ministry. He has made us abled ministers of the New Testament. Amen. And then why just the New Testament? Well. Because you have the old that really was the New Testament concealed, right? Amen. But he says, not of just the old, because the old is just the logos, the letter. Amen. The letter, the letter, the letter. And he said, no, not just of the letter. He's not doing away with the letter because it is the logos. It is the written word of God. And these men just didn't write abstractly, but they were written as the spirit of God came on them. They were inspired to write these writings, right? But he has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the logos, but of the ruha, of the spirits. Why? Because the letter killeth. How in the world can God's word kill? Isn't it the word of God? Isn't it God? God is his word and the word is God. And they are synonymous in the same way. You cannot separate them. God is his word and his word is God. Whatsoever he says out of his mouth, he shall do it. Whatever he's spoken, he shall bring it to pass. The letter, what is he talking about? How in the world can God tell you, I'm going to do such and such and so, and that kill you? How can he say in Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt have no other gods before me? And that kill. How can he say keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy? How can that kill? How can a letter kill but the spirit brings life? 
how can that that's so paradoxical it doesn't make sense do we believe half of the Bible or the whole Bible Amen. do we just believe a part of the word and not the whole of the word what in the world are they talking about? The letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Well, we're just supposed to have a two New Testament church and just ignore the Old Testament or just rip it out your Bible. You don't need it because the letter killeth and the spirit giveth life. Is that what the interpretation is? The exegesis is not that way. Because what he's trying to do is show you a quality and a mix. He's trying to show you an era of time. And an era has a beginning and an end. He's trying to show you a bridge, a connection. He's trying to show you dispensational time periods. An opening of a time and a closing of the same. He's trying to show you what tool you use when. If you're going to the old toolbox, it might not work. We're under a new order, so use this this too it does not mean that it is defunct and old and, and it's antiquated and has no possibilities at all but he's saying you're going to have to mix it up with something you just can't spread it like you're used to it's going to have to be served up in the spirit shout hallelujah in the house shout hallelujah in the house I am able he has made us able ministers. So then therefore, what God is looking for us to be is to make sure we rightly divide the word of truth. And not only rightly divide it, but understand when to apply it. In the 21st century, church, we're getting ready to crest into the 21st century. We're right now in the latter part of the decade of the 90s. The church of the 90s cresting forward into the 21st century because we are 21st century ministers. You have to realize because you are predestined for this time, you have to know the ability and the wherewithal of how to be effective. There is no use in you using systems and things and articles and tenets of faith that do not work for this generation. There is no need in you bringing a mule when we have the conventionary efforts of the Ford. You have to realize what works and not be afraid to utilize it. Regardless of how you are mocked and scoffed, you have to be abled. Able minister, sufficient wherewithal in the word of God, knowing how to listen and move by the auspices of the Holy Spirit. In a generation that we now live in, we have mixed dialogues and mixed upbringings and mixed traditions and mixed societal communications and mixed social understandings. Now, for us to be effective, we have to come to square one, some kind of medium whereby which we all understand. It's going to be necessary. Why? Because if we're going to be effective in the latter phases of this decade and enter into the 21st century, if the Lord should tarry, then we must be about being excellently and effective. There is no way absolutely, my sister and brother, that you're going to be effective if you are a minister without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No way. No way. Absolutely no way. What worked under the Logos won't work in the New Testament. What worked yesterday hmm, will not take you through today yeah. what worked centuries ago is not where we are in christendom today we must 
understand if we will be effective oh sisters and brothers of the holy savior you have to realize when god changes you change when god says move you just move when god says go you just have to go and if he says jump you just say ha ha and shout hallelujah shout hallelujah our generation has been in a paradox because we are siblings of an old tenet of faith we are the progenitors and the siblings those of us in this room of those who are forefathers of our faith we're not too far down the line the traditions have been passed down the timings have been passed down the church liturgies have been passed down the church relics and ritualisms have been passed down to their sons and that's the way you keep traditions alive you pass them down from father to son from mother to daughter from daughter to her children you pass it down this is the reason why if mother was something the whole family was something if father was of a particular persuasion then the whole household was of that persuasion it wasn't that you had an opinion because you were born in it you don't get a vote it wasn't about a democracy it wasn't about well mom well we, we don't we don't really like that can we no 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 uh, honey because they paid the rent and because they bought the food uh, if you was gonna live in peace, you were gonna be what they said you were gonna be. Uh, shout hallelujah in it. Well, it's necessary and tradition has its place because here we are. Mm. And we've learned God regardless to how we've struggled and were misunderstood or persecuted or fell away and came back and backslid and came back regardless of the circumstances we've learned the love and the forgiving power of God but if we're going to be effective in a world that is full of blatant decadence and immoralities and confusion and disjointed people and if we're going to offer them valid hope um, we first must be the progenitors of that hope. We have to be those who say, like our mothers used to tell us, uh, do it because I said so. Uh, you can't understand it now, but I know that you need the Holy Spirit. Uh, well, when we look at it, uh, we can see the power of tradition. Now, what we are in, we're in transitional powers here because we have the law and then we have the spirit. We have the letter and we have the spirit. And they must both work congruently and effectively together. You've got to know when to let it go and when to pick it up. You just have to know we don't live by an eye for an eye no more mm. uh, we don't live that way yeah but we do live thank God under the banner of the dispensation of grace uh, somebody look at somebody and say thank God for grace and thank God for his grace uh, and when you look at him tell him I should have been dead by now but thank God for his grace hey glory oh yeah Oh yes, oh yes, and sister and brothers, it is because of the grace of God that we are not consumed, isn't it? It is a blessed attribute of God and 
thank God for his personality. Well, my sisters and brothers in ministry, and ministry is just not those who are, are those that are the laborers over the scripture, that give themselves over to the scripture text. It, it's not that. It's just not those that uh, vocally stand behind pulpit desks or herald their voices in the street or make a noise and clamor to get the attention of crowds and to draw out the unbeliever to believe him. But to be a minister um, is to be those who have been ordained. Um, ordained means to be absolutely given the authority, authorized to do a particular work or a particular job. Mm. To be ordained is to be given the authority to do a particular work and or job. Mm. It is to be given the authorization to perform that certain task because you have been authorized. That means you are ordained. Um, with ordination must come anointing. Mm. Anointing means having the ability to do. Uh, it's not just good enough um, to be given authority when you don't have ability. Mm. You have to have the both of them. Mm. The letter without the spirit um, will kill. Um, you say, how does that work? Well, you've seen it. Um, you've seen ministers um, who had the authority but did not have the ability. Mm -hmm. It is just not enough to have the rank or the title. Reverend Williams. Um, that sounds wonderful. It, it has a very ecclesiastical sound. It, it just rolls comfortably over the tongue. Uh, but it could be dangerous uh, to elevate her and authorize her to a position uh, when she does not have the ability. Uh, Men can ordain, uh, but wouldn't you rather prefer uh, that God ordains? Uh, men can approve and authorize, uh, but wouldn't you have rather that God had already set his approval on them? Uh, why? Because um, power uh, with Without the control of another higher power uh, is dangerous. Uh, authorization uh, without the control uh, is very dangerous. Uh, authorized ability and power uh, can make one's head big. It can cause you to become proudful. Uh, make up your own rules and regulations uh, of who gets and who doesn't get uh, and who you'll approve and who you won't approve uh, but when that authority uh, is under the auspices of the Holy Spirit uh, the Holy Ghost will put you in check shout hallelujah shout hallelujah my sister and brother, power has to be governed. Power has to be controlled. And it is controlled by the anointing. The Holy Spirit will say, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 but no, 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 don't say that. Don't, no, no, uh-uh, don't do that. And we'll tell you, shut up. Uh, uh, and shut up right now and we'll tell you go somewhere and sit down uh, the Holy Ghost is not afraid of flesh uh, we're afraid of power uh, but the Holy Ghost doesn't flinch because of flesh you can have 50 titles and the Holy Ghost I tell you shut up and sit down Shout hallelujah! Oh, yes! 
seaweed. Mm. Power has to be under the control of the Holy Ghost. Power or ordination without the control of the auspices of the Holy Spirit is quite dangerous. Ministers of song have to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. If they are not, you will see them utilize their God given powers the wrong way. They will sing in church only on Sunday. Yeah. but leave their song out somewhere else from Monday to Saturday. Yeah. You have to be controlled by the Holy Ghost. They'll think it's all right to play in the clubs and it's all right to play at the bar and, and we'll dignify it with the words of Satan by saying, it's only a job. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. Uh, not at all because whatsoever God has brought out of the world, uh, he said, come out from among them. Uh, be ye separate, save the Lord and touch not the unclean thing make a difference between clean and unclean holy and unholy shout hallelujah ah, yes if you don't watch out having the authority to play the instruments and having the authority to sing being ordained Dang to sing. You'll sing one song among the saints, but when you get to your car, you sing another song. Uh, no, it don't work like that. The Bible said, how can bitter and sweet come out of the same fountain? You got to be what you are. It's still holiness without which no man, woman, boy, or girl shall be able to see the Lord. You might as well look at somebody and say, he's made me able. 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 No, you don't have to. If you don't want to, you don't have to sin. If you don't want to you don't have to lie if you don't want to you don't have to fornicate if you don't want to you don't have to live a double life if you don't want to and sister and brother this is the most solemn and fearful occasion because it gives somebody power and power without the anointing is out of control. In this particular age we live in, absolutely every minister, whether it be of word or song or of service, in the household of God, whatever it is, you have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. It controls you instead of you controlling it. Uh, you talk to people different. <laughs> Even in the midst of abuse, you, you talk to people different. Um, even though you know they've wronged you, you talk to people different. <laughs> even though you know they're walking all over you, uh, you still come back and smile and say, I love you. Uh, you work different when you are under the control of the Holy Spirit. Uh, power out of control can tear up a church, uh, split ministry, uh, destroy choirs, uh, cause dissension and confusion. Uh, power that is not governed by the Holy Spirit uh, can wring havoc into homes and destroy communities. Why? Because they said, but they are supposed to be a Christian. Uh, they're supposed to be ministers in the house of God. Uh, what they see is an actor or actor 
fortress. Another word for it is Matthew 24 and 5. Woe unto the hypocrite. Because of what you are doing, your impact, your elevation causes people to look to you for hope. Look to you as an example. Look to you as the way, as the truth, as the life, as the light for the world. And here you are stumbling around purposefully mudding around wearing sheep's clothes while you are hidden ravening wolf you live like something in the daytime and slither out of a rock at nighttime people can't trust your personality and they are confused that's why they say if this is holiness if this is the church if you are Christian I don't want to be one Ah, because power without the auspices of the Holy Spirit is dangerous. Elevating people just because they're talented is dangerous. Putting people in positions of power when they're not controlled by the Holy Ghost is dangerous. Oh, yes. Say amen in it, huh? Make the devil real mad. Say amen in it, huh? If it's hitting you, just say ouch, but say amen in it, huh? God has a controlling power. And that controlling power for every authority is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Now, if it is a doctrine, then it will be lined, laying, line on line, precept upon precept here, a little and there, a little. Then if it is so, it will be line on line, line on line, precept on precept. It will be here and there in the word of God. Look there. Look in the old covenant. Who was anointed and who had the authority? The prophet, the priest, the king. Before there was a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Who were the controlling forces? To whom and what images did the people look to? They looked to the prophet, the priest, the king. The king because he was the authority of national symbolism on how to rule the nation. Mm. The priest, because he was the spiritual advisor, he was the one who was the mediator between God and man. Mm. And if Israel was off, it is, was his job to say, nah, we must come in. Mm. The silver trumpets would sound, drawing in the solemn assembly. Uh, repent, uh, sanctify yourselves to a fast. Uh, Come down in sackcloth and ashes. But pre-adventure that the king was off and the priest was off. Thank God for the prophets. The prophet would say, thus saith the Lord. Coming in, telling you, this is where you strayed. This is where you cut off. The people looked to the leaders, those who were ordained in their specific offices, those upon whom the Holy Spirit rested. Um, it didn't rest on the whole body of Israel. Uh, it rested on those three offices alone. My sister and brother, uh, you have to realize in this generation where uh, the Holy Spirit is poured out um, upon all sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers, uh, teenagers and children alike. Uh, then we need uh, those that have to lead and those images that will move by the charisma of the Holy Spirit masses and affect generation to generation. They must have the Holy Spirit because if we are off, somebody's got to cry, Lo, here is the way. If we made a wrong turn, uh, we'll connect up in our spirit. Uh, while they're saying it, something will go off in us. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's God. That's God. Uh, you may have never heard the voice of God audibly for yourself. Uh, but because you have the Holy Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit in you will say, Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lord. Uh, 
That's the voice of the Lord. Hear ye him. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. There has to be a change. And the only reason I charge you so fervently with the power of the Holy Spirit is because in this 21st century, yeah, we're uniquely as a church of believers. We are near the closing of this day and age where it has to change. I know you're comfortable and feel like it's going to be the Gentiles' turn a little while longer. But if you can just take a moment and look over into the eastern shores and, and look at the preparation of the bodies of Asia, you can see time perspective that eschatology is telling us that it's time to look up for our redemption draweth now. But sadly and victorious to say, yeah, victory for some, but darkness for others. Because once the door is shut on the Gentile, doesn't matter what you say or do, it will be Israel's turn again. As long as we've had to be redeemed, we've had a long, long time to hear him. We've had days and months and centuries and years to cry holy. We've had generation after generation to live right. We've had months, years, and days to forgive folk and go back and say you're sorry. Many of us sincerely believe that what's all right with us is going to be all right with God. We solidify and solidify our conversation by saying, it's all right, he knows my heart. But what you don't know is that he really knows your heart. That even if he had come Ten seconds later, you'd still been lukewarm. You would have neither been hot or cold. So he came on any old way. And you'll hear him say, depart, because you work iniquity. Notice that passage of scripture is not to the unbeliever. It's to those that were in the household of faith who just felt like they could roller skate their way. Meaning slide in. Doing any old thing, any old time. <laughs> Say anything to anybody. <laughs> Slice and dice and cut them up. Leave your scars in the juggler vein. Pull them out and expose their past. Tell their illicit stories that they've been trying to keep hidden. Those who were looking for repentance and purity in God, yet you fondled with their past as if they weren't even worthy to be saved. Oh, my sister, regardless to how devious and diabolical we can become against each other, we find ourselves trying to get to the top while others in the church try to pull us down. Yeah, my sis, you're going to wake up ashamed. My brother, you're going to wake up confused. All this time I've been in the church and I'm still lost. All this time I've been a deacon and I'm lost. All this time I've been preaching and I'm lost. All this time I've been teaching Sunday school. Wait a minute, Lord, I got stacks of awards. No, no, no. He said, I never, which is a phasey clause, never means absolutely ever. I never, I never knew you. I never understood or perceived you. I never could come to the knowledge of who you really are. Yeah, you talked my name, spoke my name, lived around my people, but I never knew you. I don't understand who you are. 
just a nice dues pay. Always bringing in your offering. Visit as the church, but you won't live it. You speak it high, but you don't live it. Talk it well, but you won't live it. Tell people, oh, you got to, but you won't do it. Come to church with hidden agendas. Come here, not for Jesus, uh, but for a position. Uh, not for Jesus, uh, but for men's approval. Uh, not for Jesus, but for men's favor. Uh, won't get next to the pastor. Uh, won't get next to the pastor's wife. Uh, just want to make them see ah, decent people. Uh, folk don't count. Uh, the only one that counts is God. Uh, and you've got to be right in your heart with God. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. My sister and brethren of the 21st century, if we're going to win, we've got to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth. The Bible didn't say some truth. He said all. All is a word mean the encompassing full. The sum total of, if there is any truth to be had or to be known, it's coming through the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to receive revelation, it's got to be through the Holy Spirit. If you're going to receive deliverance, it's got to be through the Holy Spirit. If you're going to receive salvation, meaning to be snatched out of, to be snatched out of what you got your own self into, if you're going to have a Savior to come in and get you out of your can't help it, I try to stop, but I can't stop. If you need someone to kick down the door and break the chains and destroy the yoke, it's got to be through the auspices of the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing that destroys the yoke of the enemy. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. My sister and brother, for you to walk by the Holy Spirit and feel like it's just another nice work. Baby, you have missed the whole concept of the personage of Jesus in Christ. And Christ, the Christo God, the incarnate God in flesh, reconciling the world unto himself. And the comforter which shall come in my name who will teach you all things and you don't have to worry cause I'll never leave you I'll never forsake you I'll never walk off from you but lo I'm with you always even to the ends of the age so when mother is gone the Holy Ghost is still here when daddy is gone, Holy Ghost is still here. When friends turn their back, Holy Ghost is still here. When friends forsake you, Holy Ghost is still here. You must be born of the water and of the spirit. Shout hallelujah. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. You must be born, 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 born. It means to be immersed. It means baptizo, to be fully immersed. That's the old covenant. <laughs> Line on line, here a letter, that's Ezekiel 
47. Ezekiel in transition. Ezekiel 37. 37 dry bones. That's one covenant. 10 chapters later, 47. The new and living way. Seeing fountains roll down out of the north side of the temple. Going down into the eastern country, uh, my sister and brother, uh, bringing life into the Dead Sea. Uh, and it said, whithersoever the rivers flow, it brought forth life. Uh, and that more abundantly, sis. Brother, if you're going to change the century, if you're going to be effective as a minister in this 21st century, sis, don't only just have tongues, have the baptism. Have the baptism. What did I mean by that? It means even full immersion. Just doesn't mean speak it. It means completely, totally controlled by. Some people speak with tongues, but are not controlled by. Some people speak fluently in tongues, but yet have not surrendered their will to God. If you're going to be controlled, that means it's Lord, not my will, but your will be done. It's Lord, not my way, but your way. Not my goals, my aspirations, but yours, oh Lord. Whatever you have me to do, go or be, so be it. That's when you emerge. Because every fiber of your being, how do you see that? Well, that's why the angel said in 37 and 47, come out into the water, Ezekiel. And the water was to the ankle. And he said, it's not enough. He said, come on out. And he said, the water were to the knees. Sure enough, that ought to be enough power. When you can pray all night, that ought to be enough power. Nah, not enough. He said, come on out. The waters were to the loins. The loins in Old Covenant means a point of strength. Having the ability to bear up. Uh, be burden bearers uh, war for other people uh, having the ability to be a succor uh, someone who can comfort others uh, taking on another one's burden uh, having the strength for more than just yourself uh, is that enough no he said come on out into the waters notice uh, it was not water mm, there it was waters Waters out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit, waters. My God, Ezekiel said, the thing will come past me about. It'll take me over. I won't be my own. It'll be waters I have to swim in. God's looking for preachers and singers and teach and deacons and, and those that would serve in the house of God. Mothers and fathers and teenagers that call themselves Christian and baby saints and old saints. And those that been around a long time and junior missionaries and senior missionaries. Junior preachers and senior preachers. He's looking for everybody to be immersed in the spirit of God. God, why? He said, it's water to swim in, but it brought forth light. Then he took me to the brink or the mouth or the origination or the place where things get started from. Uh, and he looked on the side and the trees and healing there. Uh, ain't nobody was standing on the bank but an angel. Uh, that was nothing but a theophany of God. Uh, nothing but Jesus standing there. Uh, if you gonna work for me, uh, you gonna need this power. You're going to need this anointing. 
Ezekiel saw the waters running into dry places, healing everything today. We need these waters. We need them in New Jersey, and we need them all over the United States of America. The reason why we need these waters is because our generations that are in this particular age we live in have grown up unto the point they know not God. They don't understand who he is. And this generation has lost its way. And if we will penetrate the doom and gloom, we will need the powers of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit illuminates and causes us to be light in darkness. My sister and brother, if you're going to shine, uh, the only way you can shine mm, is that this light has to be in you. Uh, that light uh, in John chapter 1 uh, that cannot be comprehended. Uh, the Bible said, and he was the light. Uh, and the light comprehended not the darkness. Uh, there is no way the powers of darkness uh, can overcome uh, the power of a saint who has the light. Uh, that light uh, is the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Now in this darkness uh, that we see in 1993, uh, the NEA uh, often comes to the point in the National Educators uh, Association uh, keeps validating uh, the spirit of humanism uh, and the new age movement. Mm. Satan is going after our children uh, and if we will uh, lead them to the light then uh, we've got to show them uh, how they can win uh, when it looks like they're in an unwin situation. Uh, one writer of humanism said uh, this, uh, he said, they only have them. Uh, the theistic uh, only has the youth uh, only one hour a week uh, in Sunday school. Uh, how can they fight uh, in the public school system uh, when we have them five days a week, uh, eight hours every day? They change the agenda of the program. Uh, so now our students uh, in this dark situation uh, have to prevail uh, and fight uh, and weave and meander uh, their way in and out uh, of a structure uh, of humanistic error. Mm. They teaching him now in school. Uh, I was reading there mm, the statistics of humanism uh, in our modern day society. Uh, now your children understand uh, how to embalm corpses, uh, understand how to write their own obituaries or suicide notes. They also teach them how in relevant classes about nuclear war and subjects like homosexuality as a preference of another lifestyle. They also teach them about euthanasia, birth control, survival game skills. They teach it on the factual side of just being a fantasy, but all the same time seeding them for times where they have to decide who should live and who should die. My sister and brother in these survival games, they look for the fittest and they look for those who are most qualified to live, who can serve most purposes. What do you think that's saying? That's saying without them knowing, get rid of the old and let's go with the strong. My sister and brother, 
They're teaching them uh, about being planetary citizens. Uh, let's just not think about the United States. Uh, be citizenry of the world. Uh, they're teaching them how uh, at times of distress uh, to redistribute wealth. Um, what do you call that kind of a system? Uh, that's nothing else but socialism and communism. Uh, and we already see that that doesn't work. Uh, their bread lines are miles long. Uh, their meat lines are miles long. Mm. A social system without God uh, will never work. Um, they're teaching them about sexuality, uh, their own sexuality, uh, not to in any kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> be felt guilty uh, because they might have pornographic thoughts or ideas. Uh, in other words, they foster uh, their imagination and creativity. Uh, but there were some things uh, God didn't want you touching. Uh, and uh, some things uh, God didn't want you experiencing with. Uh, that means if I am vastly creative, uh, I come away uh, from the laws of Numbers uh, and the book of Leviticus. Uh, Numbers says like this, uh, thou shalt not lay with a beast. Uh, thou shalt not lay with thy father's wife. Uh, thou shalt not look on the nakedness of thy father. Uh, thou shalt not sleep with thy sister uh, or thy brother. Uh, thou shalt not fornicate. Uh, but when you foster uh, creativity uh, and become lawless in sexual promiscuity. Uh, you're asking them to venture out uh, beyond the laws of God. Mm. You've taken away their rule book. Uh, you're taking the Bible out of school. Uh, so you're telling them to go for the sun. Uh, hit your highest mark. Uh, you only live once. Uh, you only get around this world once. Uh, try the cookie before you marry uh, my sister and brother. Down they teaching them uh, the crafts of witchcraft, uh, sharing with them about werewolves. Uh, and some of y'all don't even believe it. Uh, you don't understand the power of unclean spirits. Uh, you don't know the power of fallen spirits. Uh, you just think it's MGM uh, cinematography. Uh, you just think it's a movie. Uh, well, it's not a movie. Uh, Satan will get in foul things. Uh, Satan will contort. Uh, Satan will restructure and disfigure. Uh, Satan can possess a man uh, and make him do things he never believed were possible. Uh, Satan can possess a woman's life uh, and a teenager's life uh, and then let the gun be in their hand and leave them uh, to fry in the electric chair. Uh, my sister and brother. Uh, they're teaching them how uh, to venture out in spiritisms uh, such as astrology, Ouija boards, uh, and the great spirits. Uh, they won't call God God, uh, but they have intersected God with so-called great spirits. Uh, the great spirit is Satan uh, and the mother goddess. Uh, they asked them to get your wisdom counselor. Uh, they're showing them how to pull down spiritual powers uh, mediums that will help them uh, get in touch with their counselors uh, that will give them wisdom uh, and you're at home uh, or somewhere down the street uh, somewhere aloof uh, and you haven't pleaded the blood uh, over your son or daughter uh, and you haven't even pleaded the blood uh, over their minds and their spirits uh, and they're being opened up to new vistas uh, paramount powers uh, that they cannot control uh, and you're slow about telling them uh, you must be uh, born of the water uh, and of the spirit uh, you think it's cute uh, cause he cuts his hair zigzaggy uh, puts his name in the back of his head uh, wears a pigtail and an earring uh, you think that's so sexy uh, you you think it's cute uh, cause she wears her bosoms half hanging out uh, and her dress tail real high uh, you think it's sexy uh, a 
powerful, sexy, and sly, but those spirits are telling her she's wonderful, taking her to a new venture of demoralizing her. When she comes back home, she'll not be the daughter that you sit there. Their attitudes are changing. Huh? Their personalities are changing. Huh? And you think they're just going through a teenage thing. Huh? What kind of mother? Huh? What kind of father huh? are you huh? when you are the watch over huh? the children of this generation? Huh? My sister and brother, huh? if you have the Holy Ghost, huh? the Holy Ghost will ring out a bell. Huh? and say, go upstairs, look in Susie's drawer, go downstairs right now and pick up the phone, go over there and you'll catch Bobby, my sister and brother, if you're going to win this generation, you must be immersed in the Holy Ghost. Ain't no doubt about it. You got to be. You must be. You have to be. You got to be born, born again. So see, yeah, see, yeah, see, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Shut your hands together and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. How? 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 Ah, jeez. My sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we stand in conclusion together, shall we all stand? Shall we stand together? He has made us abled ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. So while you continue to study, keep asking him. You got to give it to me. I just don't want the tongues only. The tongues will let me know. But I don't want to stop there. I want to be totally immersed. I want to be totally under control of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk different time. I don't want to lie no more. I don't want to cheat no more. I don't want to look at folk funny no more. I want to be holy. I want to be righteous. I want the Holy Ghost to take control. And when you preach, preach under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. Don't just preach a sermon. Preach a message sent by God. Amen. Study. So God can pick anything. So God can say, no, go here. Don't prepare just by letter. Be able to listen and hear what thus saith the Lord. Because this is a living way. And he has made us living, living epistles. And he has made us lively stones in the building. And they'll know if you've been with Jesus. Not because of what you know by the letter, but something in the spirit will let them know you have been with Jesus. You must be. You got to be. Born of the water and of the spirit because the spirit makes us able ministers. God bless you. Just stretch out, touch somebody next to you. God's servant has spoken to us. God's spirit 
has touched us. But now there's someone who's never ever accepted